Hello, Steve here. Welcome to Real Health. Who'd have thought health is about what we're eating? Join me on my quest to disseminate my go-to health regimen, the Health 44, my clumsy branding of eliminating four classes of food, introducing four classes of micronutrients, bingo, bongo, health sorted. So thank you for your interest. Let's do this. Well, welcome again. If you're a first timer, many of you, welcome. I don't expect you to be back because you're not going to like it. And the reason why perhaps you don't, you won't like what I have to say is because I'm out there in left field somewhere versus the mainstream, even the not so mainstream I'm out there. The carnivores, the keto, the intermittent fasting, the vegan people, the one meal a day people, I am far, far left field for them as well. So you've clicked on today, um, your diet tribe toxicity, something like that. It might be a different one that you've just clicked on, a different uh, title. So um, the reason why I'm suggesting uh, your diet tribe has toxicity in it is because, well, let me soliloquy it through, shall I? So. I've, lift, I've, I've listened to um, quite a few vegan podcasts, more of the carnival people and in the middle somewhere, the keto people. Inter intermittent fasting are usually um, exist in amongst the keto, uh, keto people, the intermittent fasting, right? Together with, um, there's some intermittent fasting in vegan and uh, carnivore. So they're the main diatribes that are out there. <clears throat> in amongst those diatribe, those tribes, people say, oh, I'm carnival. But I, but I eat a bit, of, a bit of eggs and a bit of vegetables to negate their guilt. And then if they're part of a carnival community, they get smashed by the lion people, the lion people that live on water, salt and meat, beef, usually, and um, it's amusing, it's fairly amusing, The uh, I observe that the vegan people are very ideologically based, um, cruelty to animals, I get it, I sympathise with it, but I'm not going to put it ahead of my survival and even my cheap beef and egg and milk consumption. Historically speaking, if we're complaining about our, uh, the cost of our vegetables too, but uh, our eggs, milk and meat, it's still the cheapest that it's ever been throughout human history. So let's not complain too much. So with the vegan people, um, animal rights, usually, and there's um, a growing number of the vegan people which is um, health-centric, and a little bit less is the diet-conscious vegans. Because we know that um, it's not always successful. I would contend that it's less successful than the carnival people trying to lose weight usually um, a vegan will get carried away with um, their sweets and the vegan sweets of course and usually to make up for the calorie deficit you lay on the salad dressing the oils avocado too many of them you know too many bananas too many mangoes they're fairly uh, uh, peanuts, uh, very calorie dense, those uh, few that I just mentioned there. So the vegans can also get into calorie trouble, but it's not just, just about calories. And uh, it's also a tribe. The calories in versus calories out people are a tribe. And uh, 
I'm even aware of this particular TV show, um, something about, um, it's weight management, but um, I can't believe I'm putting on so much weight, I only eat 1600 calories a day, and then they follow, follow those people around either by camera or I don't know how it is, but uh, bingo, bongo, 4,000 calories. Ah, oh, that's why you're not losing weight. So, um, yes, I have often said in my earlier podcasts uh, that it's not about calories in and out. Short term, yes. I concur. I concur that it, it does have a lot to do with your weight in a particular week and month. But decadally, multi years and decadal, no. For the rest of your life, no. That's why we had that 98, say, percent unsuccessful weight management statistic out there because, let's face it, the calories in and out is hard to manage. But this Health 44 is easier to manage. Even the vegans can be on the Health 44, the keto, the people, the intermittent fasting, of course, and the carnival people can all do the Health 44 to get even more efficacy out of your health. Live longer, less chronic disease, and manage your health. Um, manage your weight. Manage your weight, rather. So, um, I've got a, a bit of personal disclosure slash news that um, I tried this um, monk fruit concentrate for the last year month or so when um, and for another month before that I was having the monk fruit off the store shelf which is 99% erythritol yeah. um, I only realized that a week after I started uh, eating the stuff to see how I go and even I'm susceptible to getting carried away with things um, I was making custard out of this erythritol uh, some leftover um, powdered whole egg that I had from a long time ago because it actually tasted horrible making it up into my normal eggies that I have in the afternoon now <clears throat> and uh, and I'll put the uh, erythritol based monk fruit extract and then the drops came after that or you know the, um, the concentrate that comes in liquid form don't get uh, so there you go the people that, that are buying that uh, monk fruit they're only getting one percent concentrate so if you to, to bake with the monk fruit um, the only thing I can bake with my health 44 is pretty much cheesecake so I use the, the base uh, instead of um, gluten based ingredients so I use cashew nuts it's a pretty expensive cheesecake I, I must must say with uh, what's that 30 bucks a kilo for the sugar, huh? And, uh, and the extra cream and the cream cheese and the, um, yeah, it's not cheap, so there you go. So I got carried away. Uh, basically, I was eating a whole pint of full cream, cream, cream. Ooh. So for about at least six to seven weeks, I was, wow, I was eating a whole pint. 600 mils in, in in the Aussie money um, each day, and that's like 2,000 cal around about, but yeah, let's say 2,000 calories. On top of my um, eggies and a bit of meat that I have, um, I have a, a half pound of meat pretty much um, each day, and that extra 2,000 calories over, say, nearly two month period. I only put on about two, two and a half kilos when you account for those fluctuations uh, throughout the week and even in the same day. And uh, I've been off it for probably two or three days and bingo bongo, I'm already one or one and a half kilos lighter. So, yeah. um, so that was a good little carried up, get, getting carried away with things experiment. Um, I was using erythrin, um, xylitol there for some some weeks a few years ago two years ago and uh, I was getting carried away there too so my 
my decadal sweet tooth got carried away. I should have put a lot more weight on, having 2,000 calories more per day. I only netted, say, two, two and a half kilos um, in that two month period. That's interesting. How about that? So, that was just um, a bit of an update on what I've been doing and um, what I have been doing. On top of that, like, I'm back onto my leftover protein powder, which I wasn't uh, taking because I had heaps more cream in my diet, which was, let's say, the equals about 20 grams more, 20, 25 grams more of my protein. So I've gone into um, a scoop of my leftover protein to account for the protein loss. And I'm putting that leftover uh, monk fruit concentrate into my protein and yeah, beautiful, beautiful, okay? So I've effectively reduced my calorie intake by let's say 1800 calories in a day and uh, already I feel uh, emptier. It's not a, it's not a bloating information thing. It's just um, less cons consumption. So, diet tribe, even my own tribe of one, there's a few others which have um, at least attempted my, yeah, attempted my health 44. They've done great. I've even conceived a child which was, was, which was not con uh, conceivable before. So, there you go, there you go. And the child, when the parents are on what I do, the child will come out perfect. And my child has come out perfect with a bit of a disclosure of um, a bit of eczema was there. She's a bit itchy now, but without the actual rashes. So, yeah. um, it's sort of sorting itself out, sorted out. So, um, all those tribes can get Gary carried away, and that was my epistemic humility example. And um, let's let's pick on carnivores. Let's pick on the carnivore. Oh yes, yes, uh, but it's okay to have uh, butter, bacon, and eggs. There's the BBBE, the BBBBE diet: B bacon, beef, butter, eggs, and uh, and then the. Omad carnival people go, oh no 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 no, and then the um, lion diet people go, oh no 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 no, and then um, living liver king liver king type people, oh no 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 no, you must eat the um, the <laughs> the kidney and the the liver and the the brains and the the offal and the bones. Bone, bone broth. Um, interesting, interesting, interesting. Um, keto. As a summation, as a summation, the keto people, the keto people uh, fixate on these keto treats. Oh, they're keto friendly. These, these biscuits are keto friendly. <laughs> Oh, it's not working. Oh, I wonder why. And the reason why for any tribe, let's just say uh, weight management part of any tribe, the reason why it's not working is because you have pica. P-I-C-K, pica, which is a non-nutritional um, intake of concrete, light bulbs, hair, nails, drinking, smoking, um, drug taking. Pika, what a concept! That might be another episode to build on. Build on what I've been suggesting in the past. Yes. So, <clears throat> one way to uh, solve our homelessness problem and um, mental health, homelessness, uh, psychological impairments. Uh, neuro atypical um, atypical uh, presentations of learning and all that sort of thing minerals 
there, so that's another episode. That'll, that, that's another tribe. The neurotypical type tribe, the depression tribe, the PTSD tribe in, in the mental health space. The bipolar people, the schizophrenic people, the functional ones, or the ones that have some personality proclivity saying that, have, they, that they have schizophrenia, you know? And uh, let's not forget the, the strategy of some of the people that uh, go vegan is because the ladies go vegan. Oh, I'm vegan because I'm getting into a pan still. And, uh, and, and the lady that goes carnival after the, the, the dude has gone carnival because he's lost 30 kilos. Oh, I'm going carnival. <laughs> uh, that, that was pretty much my case where I went on my health 44 where, oh, all this weight my man's losing, I want to go on too. And then, you know, my partner lost weight, didn't she? Yeah. Uh, and then we could see the child. Yeah. That's right. With a healthy child. Bubbly little, little Tatiana. She's great. She's great. So tribes can come in uh, politically, um, monetarily too. I've heard the Bitcoin crowd is very toxic to one to one another, and um, the Ethereum people and the Cardano and Solana and uh, Watermelon. That's another crypto. Apparently, there was about approaching twenty thousand different cryptos out there. I think there's under ten thousand now, or probably two thousand active ones. Anyway, so uh, people have learned certain things from crypto. There's uh, economic tribes like the, the Mises uh, Austrians, the uh, Ludwig von Mises, um, there's the uh, Wealth of Nations, uh, Adam Smith, uh, uh, Austrian people, and then there's the, oh boy, um, then you get the modern monetary theory people, then you get the, all those tribes, you know, the um, The current system, uh, whatever that system is, uh, very social, um, social science based, and um, Keynesian economics. Those people. That's what I was trying to think of before. And uh, then you get the psychology tribes, the people that fixate on narcissists, the people that. Do the big five um, personality traits? The that um, Biggs something Biggs personality uh, model. And then you get uh, person, uh, the sexuality tribes, tribes in all the tribes as a whole, LGBTQI plus uh, tribes. Then you get the tribes within. The LGBTQ plus, the gays, the lesbians, the trans, top of the tree, the tree, transsexual people, and um, and diets are in there somewhere too. They, oh, have, never mind the diet people. How about the people that are in the exercise stuff, the cardio people, the boxing people, the Pilates people, the weight like weight weight training people, the bodybuilding, and the power lifters and the calisthenics. And the gymnastics and the street gymnastic people, the parkour people and the like. All those different tribes. So I'm getting less toxic now, but the toxic ones out there in the political and diet and health space. And, you know, you get the tribes of um, um, the Picos tribe and the menopause this and the... Um, testosterone that and the uh, yeah it's it's a tribe minefield out there we used to be just this tribe you know 150 200 people in, the, in this tribe and if you didn't worship Zeus or God or anything off with your head or more accurate whoopsie we just had an accident uh, in hunting he accidentally got a, a arrow through his neck <laughs> whoopsie whoopsie yeah, so 
Um, and yes, it is toxic. And I, I am very untoxic because firstly there's no one to be toxic with and uh, and if the if the health 44 does get traction um, I'm sure I'll be one of the toxic people because I'm the original I'm the founder you schmucks and I'll probably be like a Steve Jobs and then run, run it into the ground where people start saying oh this is fine that's fine bingo bongo they've put on their 50 or 100 pounds that they've lost and then they die at the age of 72 because that's our trajectory if we don't do the health 44 and the health 44 is eliminate four classes of food and then add four classes of micronutrients those four categories of food that we need to eliminate is the glutens oils sugars nitrates nitrites four categories of food 90 plus percent of the supermarket gone and then adding the four classes of micronutrients, those 90 declared essential micronutrients. If you don't have them, you get ill, and if you don't have more of them, you die. So 60 minerals in that, 16 vitamins, 12 amino acids, two essential fatty acids, bingo bongo, health sorted, live longer, lose weight, uh, run around with your kids or whatever, and uh, and then people will, will be saying when you're you know, 89, 103, well, oh, what do you want? You'll be on TV at 103. Oh, what do you attest your longevity to? Well, let me tell you, um, the longevity people, that they're going to um, uh, suggest that you're on a Okinawan or, or Mediterranean diet. Then they're going to suggest that you're spiritual and you pray. Then they're going to suggest that you have a bit of sherry and a bit of a bit of milk in your tea, but you're mostly vegan, and then, then they'll say, oh, well done, well done, Mavis, or fucking Alfred, and uh, that's why you're a centenarian, never mind that you should have died in, um, you know, 15 years before, because you're just lucky that you've uh, run the gauntlet, you still look like um, your keeper of a crypt, usually, um, if you do the health 44, I advocate, I propose, I forecast that if you get to 103, which I reckon I will, um, I'll be looking like I'm an 80 year old perhaps, maybe 60, even more grandiosely like I do now, but yeah, I'm not that grandiose. So, and also a bit of a um, challenge and a disclosure and what, how I approach the Health 44 is um, the founder of the bulk of my approach is um, uh, Dr. Joel Wallach, he's now 84-ish. And uh, he's starting to slow down. He's still working quite a lot, but uh, he's slowing down. He only is practicing what he preaches now, starting properly about 30 years ago. So he started late. He was around my age when he really started um, cutting out gluten to absorb and all that sort of thing. So even on that trajectory, I hope to at least get it into my um, mid octogenarian years because let's face it I, I did start late in my late 40s I'm now 50 in a few months well what's this few months business next month I'll be bloody 51 and um, let's see if I get into my octogenarian years because formerly formerly I was going to die statistically around mid 60s low 60s because being a beast all the chronic health issues that were, that were creeping in with uh, the increased amount of medication that I was on was not looking pretty. And I wanted to be prettier for all of us out there, and it's easy. Eliminate those four categories of food with some nuances in there. Add those four categories of micronutrients via supplementation, dependable daily supply. According to body weight, that's why I do suggest and advocate that um, that you do the, the Health 44 via the supplier of choice, Longevity. They've got the whole um, weight versus dose um, model in place, which uh, 
rightly, rightly accounts for body weight because all vertebrates for that matter, like a shrew, a hummingbird, uh, I was gonna say snail, um, dogs, giraffe, crocodile, elephant, and uh, turtle. Turtle? No, they, they don't have a backbone, do they? Anyway, yeah, that's not a, I don't think that's a vertebrate. No, it's not. So, we all need 90 essential micronutrients, people and vertebrates, animals. Yeah, yeah. So, if you want to be in your diet tribe, let's guarantee success in your carnivore, keto, vegan, and intermittent fasting if you're part of um, one of the four or three. <clears throat> And if you live a balanced diet, get rid of those four food categories at least. The glutens, you can still have grains, but I believe in my humble opinion that eliminating grains will um, get your health even better um, sorted. I was having rice and corn for the first two years of my health 44. And uh, now I've eliminated all the uh, 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 grains as well. And uh, oh, what do you do for bread? Uh, you know, that's the first thing that, <clears throat> like uh, a normie, would uh, would ask. <laughs> Heaven forbid! What do you do for bread? What, what do you What do you need bread for? Breaking bread, you know. We need bread. Shut up, shut up. No. Oh, but gluten free bread. Yeah, gluten free bread, then you get, if it's made of oats, then it's not gluten free. And if it is if it is purely gluten free and it's made out of, I don't know, maize or rice flour, or bleh, um, it's got oil in it to get the consistency right. It's not the same either. So, no. Forget your bread. Forget your pizza crust, which is gluten-free. Forget it. Don't have cauliflower pizza crust. Forget it. Forget it. Don't have uh, diabetic, diabetic ice cream. Forget it. No ice cream, you fuckers. Hmm. Speaking of ice cream, that's another disclosure. I made keto, uh, keto 44. <laughs> I made um, health 44 ice cream the other day. Whipped up some cream. Put some some of my uh, yeah, 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 yeah. monk fruit concentrate in there. Mwah. It was very solid when it came out of the freezer, but um, that's the side effect. So I, I tried to um, give a bit of a treat uh, to the to my partner, and uh, yeah, lovely, lovely. But it was too hard. Well. You get normal ice cream that gets too hard in the fridge too, right? So I find it found it quite um, uh, satiating or lovely to to eat. It was nice. Probably would have been better if I put the um, erythritol-based monk fruit extract um, in there to give it some more fluff uh, to not freeze like it did. Or maybe it would go even more icy, uh, go icy. At least this wasn't icy, it was rock hard, but it wasn't that icy rock hard, you know? So that was another test which I've done away with because I was already <laughs> consuming a whole pint of cream in a day, per day. 2,000 calories that I wasn't doing before and I only put on two kilos in, in a couple of months based on that. Uh, that was interesting. With, the, with even less even less um, um, physical activity because I've been doing a tiny bit of uh, calisthenics and I've had a broken thumb and I couldn't do any calisthenics, any proper calisthenics at least and uh, yeah, even less physical activity netted me only two kilos more in those two months. There you go. So whatever diet tribe that you're choosing, um, don't be a fanatic, don't be a fundamentalist. Yeah. 
bring bring religion into it even in 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 religion which i should have mentioned earlier where religion fits religion um is very toxic among, amongst itself uh, different doctrines in, in the same parish as well and uh yeah so there you go um if you're one of the protagonists or antagonists in the diet tribe of your community um, yeah uh, you're no better off you're still probably going to live to the average age of say 80 I don't believe it's 80 I think it's probably closer to lower 70s but anyway um, I'll cut it there I think I've probably made my point um, any tribe that you do diet tribe that you that you're in part of or joining and contributing to um, participating in um, it's not going to help you if you don't do the health 44 or any part of um, especially the if there's three levels of the health 44 level one like non-compliance but still um, improving your health all you need to do is just take your extra minerals 60 those 60 essential minerals but usually those are uh, colloidal uh, minerals come with um, mm, 75 85 minerals in there but um, with what uh, my supplier, Longevity, uh, they tend to have a pretty good mix in their um, minerals and comes out to be what we really need, you see. And um, so, minerals is the lowest um, ability to improve your health. Then comes the Health 44. Um, without nuance and then you get stage three or level three where digestion comes into it where you, uh, you shouldn't be um, drinking half an hour before you before your meals or 90 minutes after your meals manage your hydration that comes into play and then your efficacy improves even more anyway um, I've just quickly got a duck into the shops here and um thanks for tuning in and hey maybe see you next time and you know, usually with uh di disclosure state statements or is it no is, is it a disclosure statement or indemnity statement i forget the right word here but uh stuff yeah i'll be um saying anything that the law allows and uh, hopefully it might take a decade, it might take half a century for people to realise that what I'm suggesting here works. So uh, I'm not going to hold my breath, but um, in whatever path you choose with your, with your health, I don't know. If, if there is something better which I am advocating for here, I will easy, just, just like that, do that other that's out there okay so um that there's my epistemic humility as part of that so um until the next time hopefully bye bye